if you don't have any personal talents that separate you from anybody else, then the thing that you do have that sets you apart from everybody is your perspective. The perfection is a disguise for insecurity. I focus more on the marathon than trying to have it all perfect. I'm putting this out because I'm passionate about putting this out. Hey, what's the deal, y'all? Back with another episode of The Rock Report. And this one, I got a guest returning back again, Funny Juan. What's the deal with you, boy? I'm just trying to, trying to stay safe. That's good. That's good, man. Um, I know this is the last time you came on the show. The audience really appreciated having a much younger perspective. So, um, you know, since y'all out of school for the rest of the year, figure why not? Good to have you back, man. How you feel about being out of school? I'm disappointed. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to go back to school because... I was bored just sitting around the house, playing a game, watching TV all day. Just wasn't my thing, you know. I'm and usually I'm very I'm a very reserved person. I'm a I'm usually a homebody, but being home so long, I just you know I miss going out in the world, going to school, and you know. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I've I don't hear a lot of people your age really eager to go to school, but again, that's why I'm glad I could have you back. You know, to speak your perspective. Something I definitely respect, and I know you wanted to talk about, you know, get your thoughts on today's economy, everything that's happening with this crazy virus. So I'm going to do something a little bit different this time, y'all. We're going to spend a few minutes with the guru. I'm going to go ahead and use this hourglass, kind of like the time, the whole thing. So just kind of try something out, just go. But he reached out to me because he wanted to speak his thoughts on, you know, today's economical conditions with everything that's happening with COVID-19 or whatever you're going to call it, whatever scientists call it. But we know what it is. It's obviously a problem in our own communities, in our in our globe, in our world, in our everyday lives. So hearing it from a young guy's perspective is is gonna be it's gonna be good. So, man, what's your thoughts when you first you know heard about the virus and you just kind of like saw just the impact that it was hap- having on the world around you? What was kind of your reaction? My initial reaction reaction was you know is at first I didn't think it was that serious because everybody was just uh, profiling it as just a, a common cold that mm-hmm. you could just get over. So I didn't think it was that serious, but then when I saw that it came to America and, and thousands of people was dying from it, it opened my eyes to, like, this This is serious, and we should all just do what the government say. We should wash our hands. We should, you know. At what point was this when you was when you was hearing about all of this? Uh, I would say about a month ago. Okay, so late late February maybe, mm-hmm. or or sometime early March maybe, around yeah around early March. Okay, and around that time I didn't think it was that serious because it was just it was in other countries it wasn't nowhere near America. Who was your sources? Where was you getting your information from? Um, the news, social media, <laughs> you know. Okay, the, the, the traditional spots to get right. the news from. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. I often recommend everybody use Twitter. Anybody who knows me knows I recommend Twitter. Um, man, it just it's, it's so reliable and the information is like that. Um, Twitter is the most powerful news source on our planet. It, everything is there before it's anywhere because people are talking about it already. So that's why I recommend, like, if you don't have a Twitter account now, you might want to get on there and see what's going on because you're going to be informed about world topics well in advance. Let me tell you, this this problem was actually an issue back in December for for countries. They knew about it on December 31st when it first became an actual issue. That's when China said, look, we got a problem. December 31st, 2019. So countries knew well in advance this could potentially fuck shit up. But they didn't, it wasn't very proactive about it. And um, if you pay attention to how kind of how like U.S. reacted, the noise out there is that we had reacted pretty slow. We did a horrible job. So now you're hearing about the fact that 200,000 people could end up dead. Right. What's your reaction to that? Uh, you know, like you said, we reacted too slowly. And because of that, now lives are affected. If we would have act, acted when it when if America would have. Acted when we found out it was a problem, we would have taken care of the problem early on, and we many lot not that many lives would be affected. But since we we did react slowly, lives were affected. Hundreds of thousands of people was dying. <laughs> not quite yet. So so far the death toll is at about forty five thousand. Right now, as of today, April first, death toll is about forty five k. 
So they're saying the peak could get somewhere around 200K. So we probably won't see our peak here in America to like maybe the end of this month or maybe um, the mid, you know, mid time of May. You know, so we don't know yet. Everything right now is speculation, but we're going off what our experts is giving us. Right. But right now, this is, man, let me tell you, like, this is still one of the best times to be alive. Like, I don't know what your peer group is thinking about this time. Like, when I was younger, 2008, 2009, when we was having that whole um, housing market economic crash during that point, I didn't really know. Like, I, I was not aware of economic issues. It didn't cross my mind. I really didn't give two shits about it. And they always talk about Detroit being a recession-proof city that we don't really feel what's happening when it's actually happening around us because it's like, yo, we broke anyways here, right? right? That's the stigmatism behind, you know, being a, you know somebody in poverty living in Detroit. But um, growing up, like, those those things didn't affect me. But if I would have known what I know now, knowing that there's so much that you could take advantage of in times like these, man, being your age would be incredible all over again. Like, I would do anything to be your age, right now while COVID-19 is happening. This is the time to really, like, get on it. And I know you've been daring to, like, start you a podcast. And, you know, your thing is, you you know, you want people to listen. You don't have an audience yet. Man, that's perfectly fine, bro. It's people out there who already, they already just respect you for who you are. And they just want to hear it. So when you put out a podcast, you're giving them your perspective at scale. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, I get what you're saying, but it's like, when you don't, I don't want to say it like that, but like if you don't have an audience, then pe- highest people going to notice you. That was my whole thought process of, behind it. But now that you said that, it, make, it motivates me to, to get up and, and just do it. So how often do you interact with people on social media? How often are you like commenting on things or uh, just getting involved in conversation? I, I want to say about twice every day. About twice a day? Yep. That's not bad because, you know, especially for your age, your age group, social media, man, is, man, it's, it's, it's twofold. It can go either way depending on who you are. But I feel like that's what it does. It just amplifies who you already are. So I feel like some ways that you can strategically get to using that is to start growing an audience now by just talking about whatever topics that you are passionate about and absolutely giving zero fucks if anybody is subscribing. Guess what's going to happen if you just close your eyes and do that until you're 20? Something incredible. Now is the time. Media consumption is about to get higher than it's ever been. People want content. They need content. They're, they're at home now. So, you being as young as you are, funny one, making people laugh, or whatever it is you're passionate about, that will catch a lot of people's eyes at some point if you do what you do on a consistent level. And, you know, my age group is really hands-on when it comes to technology because mm. they that's all they care about right now. They All they care about is being on the phone, being on, whether it be Instagram, Snap, TikTok, whatever they own, they use that to entertain themselves. And if I, and you're right, if I, you know, start, now, now, now that I'm young right now, it'll help my age group be entertained. They'll want to listen to what I have to say. They'll want to watch what I what I put out there. But here's the thing, like, at your age group, high school, this is the pinnacle where, this is the, the, the peak of where you get caught up and what everybody else think about you. Your reputation and how the outside world is perceiving you. The most powerful people have just found a way to remove themselves outside of that, like giving little fucks about how people perceive them or like if what they're saying is actually funny, if their voice sound good when they sing, if they play basketball as good as they think they do. At some point, the greats got outside of that and just understood who they are and decided, listen, I'm just going to go hard in the way that I know how to go hard and live with whatever comes from that. And... There's something about you, something about your personal talent or skill level. If you don't have any personal talents that separate you from anybody else, then the thing that you do have that sets you apart from everybody is your perspective. I often talk about how if you have nothing else, if talent ain't cutting it, your perspective is the thing that makes you special. Like, I talked to this kid yesterday, and I I, I reminded him when he was three years old, 
He used to sing this annoying Sesame Street song called <laughs> I'm Jumping. And the song used to just repeat it over and over. I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. <laughs> the first thing he did to me, I tried to get him to laugh, but he apologized. He said, look, I'm sorry that I was that annoying kid. I wish I'd have been more mature. So the fact that you wish you can go back and be an even better kid says a lot about who you are right now at age 15, man. So your perspective alone is the thing. It is the sauce. Who's who's 15 with a podcast? Nobody. I don't know. You could be 15 with a podcast. Right. And it's funny because when you just going back to what you said about, you know, people think not caring about what people think about them. I'm one of those people. If you if people think that I'm not funny, if they don't if they think I'm not entertaining, they don't need to watch what I'm what I'm putting out. Because if if people can take the time out of their day to watch something that's not funny, then they must don't have no life. So I feel like if you actually entertained by a person, you should watch and listen to that person and be entertained by that person and not criticize them about every little thing that they do wrong and, it's, and instead congratulating them on the things that they're doing right. I often get caught up in the conversations like that, like my brothers or my cousins. They get so caught up on the feedback that they're getting from other people. And they often, they also get caught up on feedback that they're not receiving. So I need y'all to understand that, look, if you decide to go after something, if you decide to, like, venture out and, and, and just, like, go in a direction and try to be successful in that direction, whether it be with music, art, food, like, whatever your thing is, whatever whatever direction you decide to hit, I recommend going down that path not expecting your family to be your fans, like, don't expect family to be your biggest fans. Actually, you should expect your family not to really give too many fucks. So, like, you have to automatically, like, because most people get it confused. Most people think that their song is the fire song. They, oh, I just killed this beat. Or, or check this out. Was it funny? Tell me if this, was, this skit was funny. Your shit ain't as good as you think it is. And that's the approach that you kind of have to take. Don't don't assume that your shit is just all world. Like let the market decide what it is. So go into it and drop your content with like zero expectations. Everything I put out, bro, I don't know how many views this video gonna get. The the thing that will weaken me and probably stop at least one person from getting value is if I care too much about that. If I cared about how many views this video got putting it out, this might stop somebody from getting the value that they just got out of whatever I just said. And to put, going back what you said, um, people, when they do something like music or comedy, they go into it not being humble. They go into it being arrogant and think that they, you know, is when they first get into it, they think they're the king of the mountain or the king of the That's hill. cool. They can think whatever they want to be. Yeah, they can, they can but think. it's like people don't appreciate when you arrogant. People don't appreciate... The fact that you think that you already as good as you think you are, but not really. I'm going to tell you, though. People appreciate everything. Pe- they, everything. Hey. There's assholes out there that have a million followers. And, like, I literally watched a guy. I forget his name. I think he was, like, a crip or a blood. He used to go inside of, like, stores, stand on top of counters, kick stuff over, grab food out of the bins, throw it at the workers. All for social media. He did this for social media clout and had millions of followers. And it broke my heart that people subscribe to that ignorance. But at the end of the day, that's what they chose to subscribe to. And I can't, there's nothing I can control. But what I can control is what I put out. And you can control what you put out and what you choose for people to subscribe to. So what other people got going on, that, that don't got nothing to do with you. Whether they assholes or whether they big booty girls on Instagram, like none of that. It don't matter. Like everybody can create an audience, but who's going to be consistent enough putting out content where that audience can find their way to it? That's the name of the game. So I'm daring you to take advantage of the stay at home order that's going around on our planet. It's going to be like this for the next couple of months. Take advantage of that. I want to see you put out content every single day, even if it's just one piece. That's why I recommend making a, tw- a Twitter account, because if you, even if you make one tweet, that's a piece of content. You can jump right in on conversations. What's some of your favorite topics? Uh, movies. 
Movies. Food. Food. Kinda. What's your favorite movie that you've seen? The last movie you've seen? That was pretty good. Uh, the new Sonic movie. I thought, Sonic? Yeah, I thought I thought that movie was pretty good. It was. It had a balance of, of everything that I liked. So. You know what you could literally do? You could literally, like, go on Twitter and type in Sonic and, like, start having conversations with people who are just talking about Sonic, the things they like, the things they dislike, and just kind of, like, jump in on those conversations and just say whatever you want to say. Just to get conversation going. But what they don't know is you're actually simultaneously building a personal brand as you create a relationship with this person. You're not trying to sell them anything. I just want to talk. You're talking about Sonic, right? I just want to comment on what you're talking about. And b- before you know it, you got a whole conversation going with a group of people. You know what I'm saying? And it works just like that. Because one thing I learned that, man, starting conversations or communication is the key to freedom. It's the thing that's going to take you to the next level. But you don't know who that person is going to be or where that conversation is going to come from. That's going to spark something and get things, get the ball rolling for you. You know, and the fact that you're young, I know you, you know, you haven't quite, quite like nailed down the very one thing that you want to do. But that's perfect. You don't have to be limited to one thing. You can try multiple shits. So you said you like, you know, movies. You said you like food. Those could be your conversations. You could do your next your next video could be just talking about what you liked and what you disliked about the signing movie. If anybody want to chime in, sweet. If not, sweet. But you're just talking about what you liked and what you didn't like. You feel me? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. So, with that being said, what social platforms are you on? Instagram, of course. That's where that's where you mainly work, huh? Uh-huh. That's that's my main. Uh, it's my main office, if you if you want to put it like that. Okay. Like that. Okay, that's cool. Sometimes I go on Facebook, and a lot of people be like, oh, that's for old people. No, it's not. It's not for old people. It's for all people. It's for, it's for everybody. It just perceives to be for old people. It's not for old people. Mm. I know 15-year-olds that are still on Facebook. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm on YouTube. I haven't, mm. I, ain't, I haven't officially made a, a YouTube channel yet, but I'm going to. Okay. Um, you know, that's all. All right, well, this is start for now. And let me tell you, man, YouTube is YouTube is one of the most respected social media platforms right now because that's where long-form videos are created, mm-hmm. right? So that's where you get the chance to really keep somebody's attention. If somebody is still watching this video right now, that is, that man, that, that means you literally have that, you have that person. Like, that that's your audience, you know what I'm saying? And so... Um, whatever you choose to do with that, whatever value you choose to continuously give to that audience or those people, that's completely on you. But like I said, take advantage of everything that's happening now. Like how many of your friends right now do you think is at home producing content? None. And I'm gonna tell you <laughs> I'm gonna tell you why. They're, they're not they're not like me. My friends is is more of oh, I'll take the easy way out. I ask my mom money i'll you know get entertained without entertaining myself somebody else can entertain me you know that, that's that's the type of people that i hang out with i'm not proud to, to say that but that's just what it is so if i have to say who out of all my friends creating content right now none damn you know what that's brutal honesty because they say show me your friends and i'll show you your future right so that's brutal, that's brutal honesty that you can acknowledge right now that you have friends that aren't on their shit and kind of rely on their parents. And let me tell you why that's, that's a recipe for a disaster. Because relying on your parents is just set, it's really just setting you up for failure. Because if you're born with anything, anything, no matter what it is, if you're born with it, keep in mind, it's not yours. It don't belong to you. So a lot of people grow up entitled. Mm-hmm. They feel like, well, hey, if this go wrong, I can always run back to such and such. Or mommy or daddy got me. That is going to fuck you up in the long term. Depending on them allows them to control you. They get to dictate if you get the right to make a TikTok or not. Mm-hmm. If you get to live in a house, what school you go to, what religion you worship, especially if you're living off their money. So the faster you can establish your independence from whoever mm-hmm. that wants to control your life, like if your parents don't want to support what you're trying to do, the faster you can break out of their out of their chains and get your own independence, the better. Start doing what you want to do. What makes you happy. 
We always talk about it. And also, your parents ain't gonna always be for, be there for you. One day you're gonna make a mistake. They're gonna they're gonna say no. You're gonna be living on the street or in your best friend's mom's cousin's basement, living somewhere you don't want to live, doing something you don't want to do, working at McDonald's, driving a non reliable vehicle. <laughs> You know, just all this stuff. So, you don't, people always say, oh, I'm going to ask my parents to buy me a car. You can only get so far with that because if that car, if you mess it up, it's on your parents to pay for it. <laughs> then you have to pay them back somehow fixing your car. And it's like, well, how are you going to pay somebody back without any income? <laughs> exactly. You, you That's the setup. That's the setup that we all follow. It sounds good. Like, hey, here's the keys to your apartment. If, Here's the keys to your house. If your parents is is offering to buy you something that you need for at least a year or two, don't accept it. Because I'm going to tell you, parents, they like to control what you do, dictate where you live. And like you said, like, they like to dictate your life. So if my parents offered, offered me a car, a, just for example... If they offer me a charger, I'm not going to take that charger because it's free and my parents have bought it. I'm going to work my way up. I'm going to get the money that I, I to afford to buy my own car. Mm. I'm going to do what I have to do, even if I'm driving a lease, a <laughs> un, you know. Like something a, that's not really something that's fashionable. Not really, I got you. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it sounds like man, you already know you already know what you're talking about. You already got the right, you know, the right mindset around that. Understanding that accepting that free lunch is a weakness. That's what they call it. That's what's in the 48 laws of power. Never accept the free lunch. There's always a string attached to something that appears to be for free. That gift, that car from your mama or your daddy, it's a trap. It's it's your daddy just want to control you. That's it. That's it. Hey, you ain't you ain't make it home at 8. What happened? Fuck all that. Go do your own shit. Do like he said. He's going to work and get it on his own. I respect that about you, man. I respect that. But, you know, make sure that you have an understanding with your parents early on. Make sure they know exactly what you're after. Oh, I told them. And let them know, look, I love you. I absolutely love you. And I'm going to need your help if something goes wrong with this venture. So if you could please just support me at this for X amount of months, I promise I'll do whatever you ask me to do after that. I promise. My, <laughs> I was always taught that if my dad, my daddy, you always you tell me, you always used to sit me down. You say, "Son, I'm gonna tell you this one time, one time only. If I give you a fish, you'll never learn how to hunt for yourself. But if I teach you to fish, you'll know how to hunt for your own as you get older." Mm, your, your dad actually told you that. Yes, he actually told me that. That's one of the old most valuable adages, and it's like, it, 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 I mean, it just encompasses everything. It's like, if if I hand this to you, you're just gonna become entitled. You're just gonna want more from me, and then I'm not. You're not gonna know how to provide for yourself, like, bro. I know twenty. I know grown twenty five year olds who don't know how to live life without mama. I I do you one better. I know a thirty year old who. Can't even do basic math, Oof. and it and sorry, it's sorry. it's heartbreaking because if you that age and you can't you can't count to ten, counting is is everything. That if you can't count money, you you gonna get cheated. If you can't count, how if you ask for a, a ten piece nugget and you only get a five, and you can't count how many nuggets you got. You getting cheated out, cheated out the food. You getting cheated out facts, the food. Facts, facts, and I, I kind of I feel sorry because, I mean, I don't have. It's not sympathy. It's more so empathy, right? Because I know that every man has the ability to learn what he chooses to put to his mind to learn. So if you knew you couldn't count to ten in thirty years, you had the ability to understand that you did not know that. And I know they say you don't know what you don't know, but you saw everybody else counting to ten. God damn it, and you could have figured it out. There's YouTube, there's Google. So, and there's unlimited resources. Look at Frederick Douglass, right? Frederick Douglass was supposed to be a slave. Didn't know how to read or write after he escaped and got his own freedom. Taught himself how to do both. Ended up going from slavery to having dinner in a White House with the president. That's one hell of a feat to pull off, but it takes determination. 
So that 30 year old, I have empathy for you. Maybe it's a brain condition. You never know what people are going through, man. But I feel like it's opportunity here for everybody. Just don't let that be you. Trust me, I know how to count to 10. So <laughs> I don't got to worry about that. All right, cool. As long as you're not to do 10, we good. <laughs> as long as you're not to do 10, we good, man. But, um, man, I appreciate you for coming back on here, man. You know, giving your perspective about everything that's going on in the world. Um, this is my first time actually trying out the glass, so it looks like um, we almost wrapping up here. Uh, but before I get all the way down to the end, though, I do want to just ask you, man, is there anything that you got going on for yourself that, you know, you want to, sh- you know, bring the people in on? Any, any ideas that you've been thinking about, acting on, that you quite haven't been nervous about moving forward with next steps in life? What's up? What you got going on? I mean, I already mentioned the YouTube channel is coming soon. Um... If you follow me on my Instagram, it, at why so funny, it'll probably be somewhere on the screen feed. Not too lazy to edit it on there. If you follow me on there, you know I can, I give out updates about it, and you know you can you can check me out on there. So are the people gonna get some content out of you? Yes, most definitely. All right, y'all. As I always, I always put pressure on everybody who come on. We're gonna be watching you, bro. And we still watching you. Mm-hmm. I'm watching you. Juan, I'm watching you, bro. I'm watching you. You don't even know. I just pop on your page randomly. You'd be like, hey, Juan liked your video. Let me see what Juan been up to. And I make sure I'm like, oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. You got a meme or two out. I appreciate that. And a word of, of, of advice for this coronavirus thing, wash your hands. If you don't wash your hands, if you out touching stuff not washing your hands, here's the problem. Mm, mm, mm. I don't know some nasty people out there not washing their hands. Even if you just hands. take the time to to get a, a a hand sanitizer bottle, just you know, lather your hands for a good thirty seconds, you'll be good. But just don't go out touching people with dirt all in your fingernails and and dirt all on your palm of your hand. You you have a problem. Hey, look, I appreciate you, my brother. Thank you again. Thank you.